Hey. It's been a pleasure. Until this the is next Brenda time. Brenda Martin with Positive Spin TV with positive news. Music has been a great influence in human life from the time it was first conceived. It impacts mood, memory, and in the case of singer-songwriter Buzzy Martin, it's a beacon of light he shares with people who may have lost their way or simply as a means to convey a message. There is hope amidst the struggle. Here on Brenda's Interviews, we experience the positive spin that Buzzy Martin's music brings. Hi, this is Brenda Martin from Positive Spin TV, and I'm here with Buzzy Martin from Sebastopol, California, a musician who has written a book and got a movie deal, and we're gonna listen to see what he has to say. That's pretty good, yeah. My name is Buzzy Martin, I live in Northern California, and I'm a child at risk uh, music mentor. I did write a book called Don't Shoot, I'm the Guitar Man. A uh, movie has been made called Guitar Man, and uh, it talks about my uh, my music mentoring, working with San Quentin inmates, teaching them the gift of music and with uh, juvenile hall kids and, and just kind of showing them some light through the gift of music. So Buzzy, but, as a musician, who uses his talent for social change? Can you tell us a little bit about your activism? Well, I, uh, I started teaching at-risk kids about 32 years ago. I was going to court community schools, juvenile hall probation camp, uh, group homes, worked with a lot of um, at-risk kids that were in homeless shelters and, and just kind of fell, fell into it. I was uh, I was doing open mics and at one point th these group home kids were coming in and asked me if I'd be interested in teaching them music. And so at that point I started teaching these at-risk kids that were in group homes to gift them music which led to going into juvenile hall probation camps and then court community schools. For, for your audience, court community schools are one step above juvenile hall. So if you were going to a, a, a regular school, then you would get kicked out for whatever reason that may be. You would go to a court community school, and if that didn't work out, then you'd go to juvenile hall. So it started out by me working with these kids that were group home kids, and then gradually went into all these other areas of working with kids. That's Ama awesome. Amazing. How successful has your music program been in the community schools and jails and prisons? Changed thousands of lives. That's awesome. You know, I've, I've, I've had little kids become kids for the first time in their lives. You know, most of the kids I work with, as young as eight years old, want to go to prison. And so to see a little kid become a kid, you know, melts your heart. And, and same thing for the adults. I mean, for the adults, they, they become kids because you find that childlike inside their heart right. of being music. And right. that is the gift of making these kids and these adults just you know, humans again and have a little hope. And I, I've changed thousands of lives. That's awesome. You must feel good about that. I feel great about it. My, right? I have a very humbled heart that just, you know, melts every time I meet some of my former students that now are, you know, adults with kids themselves. Yeah. And to see the change that I brought in juvenile hall or the court community schools through, again, the gift of music, a little bit of chocolate. I mean, that didn't hurt. You read my book. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know, I read it in three hours. It's <laughs> you, amazing. Thank you. So you've also written the book. Let's talk about sure that, about your activism. Tell us about your book. Well, my book came about when I first was notified about doing this San Quentin prison thing. It was supposed to be a twelve-week program that lasted three and a half years. So in those days, for your audience, it was a, a little cassette recorder. That's right, kids, a little tape player. <laughs> <laughs> that I would just talk into and say the day's date, what's going on in the world. We talk about Columbine in the book because that was on the radio. And I would I would talk as I'm going down to San Quentin, which just what happened that day. And then when I, I would go to San Quentin, I would call my wife to let her know I was going inside because the four rules inside San Quentin, or I'm sure any institution, is you can't run because if you run, you're going to get shot with real bullets. Right. You can't wear blue jeans because that's the, the, the cloth of the inmate. Right. You have to have a picture ID at all times. Otherwise, they won't let you out. And the last one is they're not going to negotiate your safety, which means if if there's a riot, I'm dead. And so I would let, let her know when I'm going in, and then I would let her know when, I, when I'm out. And so when I got out, I would let my wife know that I'm out, 
and then I would sit in the parking lot for, I don't know, about an hour or so and cry and throw up and talk into the tape player wow. and purge everything that just happened for the last three hours. Wow. And so I kept that going for the whole three and a half years. When my program ended, I, I took about a year and transcribed everything from the tape to a piece of paper and pencil. And when I was done, it was I had this stack of paper. And then what happened is one of my guitar students' mom said, hey, look, why don't I put this on computer? Because your wife's really busy having the, the real job. And I'll do this for you. And so she brought over, which she said, you have a manuscript. And I said, what is a manuscript? Because I, I didn't even realize what I had. And she said, well, this could be a book. And when you talked before, she said, I couldn't put it down. It sounds like you're talking to me and this could be a movie. And that was where the journey started. So that's my next question. Your book is going to be a movie. Tell <clears throat> us about that. Well, so to finish the, the whole deal, so, so what we did is we put together the, a self-published book and two years later, what happened was I, uh, I got on Facebook because my buddy said, you know, you, you could be a, you're a social butterfly. You should be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, what is Facebook? And so that was a whole other journey again, because I'd never been on a computer before, never did taping class and stuff. So I get on Facebook and within a few months, I run into this woman that worked for Mayor Gavin Newsom. And so I thought, yeah, w wouldn't this be nice if I could get my book into the San Francisco Juvenile Hall? And so I sent her a book and she called me and said, you know, I couldn't put your book down. Sounds like you're talking to me and it should be a movie. And I and I work for this movie company in San Francisco. Could you send the director and the producer a copy of your book? So I did. And in the meantime, I have a friend that worked for Penguin Books. They gave one of my books to one of her friends because he was a musician. So I've been in contact with him. So on the way down to San Francisco, so, so ha what happens in two weeks, I get a call from the movie producer saying I read your book I couldn't put it down I think I can make a movie out of this that's great so we, we drive to San Francisco and meet up with Mr. Robinson and we broker a deal over my self-produced book published book and so on the way home we pulled over call my buddy from Penguin Books and say hey, look I just brokered this deal with a movie and he goes well I have this idea send me a couple of books so now I sent him a couple of books, and by the following week, I got a book deal with Penguin Books. And, and everybody great. asked me, well, who's your literary agent? I don't have an agent. No. Nope. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I think this was supposed to happen because I, I just feel like I, I've become the voice of the incarcerated. And, and I tell these stories about these inmates or these at-risk kids that I can, people listen. Right. And, and and I just feel like it was supposed to happen this way. Right. But that's how the book came about because everybody gives me a hard time about, well, how did you do that? Well, it, it, it just happened. It was just a gift that, that really happened at that point. And I think it's real important that even if it wasn't my book or, or the movie based on me, we lock up way too many people for stuff that uh, is just ridiculous. Low level drug, alcohol, mental health crimes, you know, yep. stuff that we should really be helping our fellow mankind, our brothers and sisters, or yep. our aunts and uncles, or moms and dads, Absolutely. and we don't address that. Yeah. What do you see in the future? Well, I hope that once the movie gets released, and again, the movie's called Guitar Man, um, I, I hope that it does so well that I can visit every juvenile hall in the country. I really want to be able to let these kids know that you know to give them hope and, and and try to make them understand that they should have some kind of goals or or dreams or or something in their life to yeah, go after they need that. What, whatever it may be yeah. and i would like to visit the the state prisons and perform some of my songs not that i'm johnny cash or Murrow haggard i'm buzzy martin but i i try to you make these guys understand that we there are people that really do care about these guys and right. women right and that are incarcerated or abused and that uh, there's got to be a better way, and, and that's what I'm trying to do. With it. It's all about education, not incarceration. And you're the man. I try to do the best that I can. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Buzzy. Hey. It's been a pleasure. Until this the is next Brenda time. Lynn Martin with Positive Spin TV with Positive News.